Good afternoon. It's Thursday, July 9th. And as we take a look at our devotional series in the Gospel of John, we're in chapter 11 today, as we look at the account of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. And in this account, there is wonderful comfort for us as Christians as we see the Lord exercise his power over death. He was able to bring back to life a man who had died and been in the grave for days. We've seen him do similar miracles for others on the pages of Scripture as well. You remember the, the widow's son outside of the town of Nain as he stopped the wedding or the funeral procession and uh, brought him back to life and gave him back to his mother. Uh, you know, we also see Jesus' power over, over death on Easter Sunday as he comes back to life himself as the champion over sin, death, and the power of the devil. And why is it that knowing that Jesus has conquered death can bring us such comfort and that he has the power to raise people from the dead? Why would that bring us such comfort? Well, because we know nothing is impossible for our God. And it demonstrates that he can do exactly what he said he would do. And here in this account, the Lord shows that he is indeed the resurrection and the life and that whoever lives and believes in him will never die. They will continue to live their life in heaven, even after they leave this earth and the life that we know here. A better life waits for the child of God in heaven. A life that is full of joy, in which God wipes every tear from our eyes. And so as Christians, as we might see death approaching in our lives, there is no reason to fear, because that death becomes simply a doorway for us as Christians that we walk through. On this side of the door, we're living our earthly life in service to Christ. On the other side of the door, we're in eternal glory with our Savior in heaven. And that moment in between, what a wonderful transformation that will be for us as we leave behind all of the trappings of sin in this world and take up the robes of righteousness won for us by our Savior. What great comfort there is in knowing that all who die believing in Jesus as the Savior are only asleep for a, a few moments, if you will, before they are with their God in heaven. In fact, the Lord says the moment that our soul leaves our body, it goes straight to heaven, and we are with him for the rest of eternity then. We give thanks to the Lord for sending Jesus to be our Savior and for the fact that he has the power over sin, death, and the power of the devil, that he has conquered them all so that we might live on this earth in obedience to all that he has done, but in thankful joy, knowing what's waiting for us in heaven has been purchased by his blood and has been accepted by God the Father as a full payment. So let us read from John chapter 11. Now a certain man named Lazarus was sick, he was from Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus was sick, was the same Mary who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with hair. So the sister sent a message to Jesus, saying, Lord, the one you love is sick. When Jesus heard it, he said, This sickness is not going to result in death, but it is for the glory of God, so the Son of God may be glorified through it. Jesus loved Mar Martha and her sister and Lazarus, and yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed in the place where he was two more days. Then afterwards he said to his disciples, Let's go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, recently the Jews were trying to stone you. Are you going back there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? If anyone walks around during the day, he does not stumble because he sees the world's light. But if anyone walks around at night, he stumbles because there's no light on him. He said this and then told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. And the disciples said, Lord, if he's fallen asleep, he will get well. Jesus had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was merely talking about ordinary sleep. And so Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sake that I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Then Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let's go too, so that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him while Martha was sitting in the house, while Mary was sitting in the house. 
And Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you've been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha replied, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live, even if he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never perish. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. And after she said this, Martha went back to call her sister Mary. She whispered, the teacher's here and is calling for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet gone into the village, but was still where Martha met him. The Jews who were with Mary in the house, consoling her, saw that she got up quickly and left. So they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you have been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and troubled. He asked, Where have you laid him? And they told him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could he not could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus was deeply moved again as he came to the tomb. It was a cave, and the stone was lying against it. Take away the stone, he said. Martha, the dead man's sister, told him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor. He's been there for four days. And Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. After he said this, he shouted with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! And the man who had died came out with his feet in his hands bound with strips of lemon and his face wrapped with cloth. And Jesus told them, Loose him and let him go. Something else here in this section of scripture that is very important, and even though it is the shortest scripture passage in the Bible, it is one that is very important for you and for me, where it says Jesus wept. There's nothing wrong with grieving. Grieving serves a purpose. <coughs> it helps bring a release of, of the stress and, and the, the buildup that comes along with the feeling of loss as, as someone we love leaves this world and there's an emptiness that is now part of our life. And that's not the way God had designed things to be. But sin, now that it is in the world, has caused death and that kind of pain to enter into every one of our lives. We've all been touched by death, death of someone that we've loved dearly. And if we haven't yet, we will be at one point. And Jesus here shows us not only that he's human and that he feels those emotions, but that it's okay to cry. The Son of God, the most powerful man to ever walk the face of this earth, wept. He wept. That's the kind of uncontrolled crying, if you will. This isn't just a tear that's running down his cheek. He was crying because he felt and understood exactly what Martha and Mary were going through. And the fact that his friend Lazarus was now dead, it troubled him, it bothered him, it hurt. That separation hurt. And so, my friends, when you and I are grieving, we have one who knows exactly how we feel. The Lord Jesus has been there. He's felt those same emotions. He understands the tears that flow and why they flow. And he's able to comfort us in a very special way. He comforted Mary and Martha with his word, and then he actually brought their brother back to life. You and me here on this earth, what he does is he comforts us with his word and assures us that our loved ones also have been brought back to life and are now living with him around the throne of God in heaven. What a, what a treasure this section of scripture is for us as it underscores for us the work of our Savior and what he has done and accomplished on our behalf and what we will enjoy because of what Jesus has done for us. So let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for being our Savior. We thank you for taking on the punishment that our sins deserved, for conquering sin, death, and the power of Satan. Oh Lord, we know that 
through these examples that you show us on script, in Scripture, that you have the power to do whatever you say that you want to do, and it is done. Oh Lord, as we live our life here on this earth, keep us in the one true faith. May it be your will that we never wander from that faith, but we remain strong in the faith and continue to grow in faith now until the day you call us home. In the meantime, as loved ones depart and go to be with you in heaven, help us to focus upon the fact that they are with you, that they are no longer dealing with sin and its consequences, but they are now knowing the full glory of eternal life in heaven. O oh Lord, comfort us in those days and be, be with us in a way that, that calms our heart, puts us at peace, and fills us with the confidence and assurance that you, O oh Lord, are a loving God who has worked out our salvation and who has a place waiting for, forever in heaven for those who believe. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you have done. And in your name we pray. Amen.